Um, so I'm Becca, this is Molly, and then we have um, like five to coordinators. six other coordinators. We're just taking other coordinators on right now because we're going to have three seniors graduate. Um, and the reason why we need so many coordinators is because we have people going to sites Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then twice on Friday. And Friday's on the same time, so we need four coordinators that day. And not like Molly and I could never do all five sites by ourselves. That would be like 12 hours community service, which would be crazy. Um, okay, we can just get started this way, I guess. Um, so like Becca said, I'm Molly, and we're both coordinators for Feed Philadelphia. Um, there are 10 total right now, three are seniors, two are freshmen. We just got them, like last week, we just took them on. Um, FEE was started in 2011. There was two programs on campus. One was called Soup Kitchen Group, and the other one was called um, Homeless Outreach. And once they realized that they were basically doing similar, working with the same population of people, um, they formed, they joined together and started Feed Philadelphia. And since then, we've expanded. Originally, I think we just went to three soup kitchens a week, and now we go to four soup kitchens a week, and we go um, almost every day of the week. We don't go on Wednesdays. Sure. Um, so many people don't understand why we have hunger. Um, it's because of power. It's inequalities and in access to resources and opportunities. So. Like we have plenty of food here on this campus to feed everyone probably like five times over. But in the city, if, if you don't have resources or power or money, you can't get food. Um, and these are just some stats. One in eight people go to bed hungry every night. Um, most people live in rural areas, which we thought was crazy because we thought they were all in cities. Um, so that's why we have that on there. And most of them are farmers, herders, or laborers. Yeah, so it's interesting to see that the most hungry people in the world are actually people who are dealing with food directly. Um, it just goes to show that there is a power, a higher power that's controlling their access to that food. Um, more statistics, 870 million people worldwide suffer from chronic hunger. So that's not like, oh, I'm hungry because I skipped a meal today. I didn't have time to eat. That's, oh, I've been hungry for about two years now. I haven't been getting enough nutrition for me to keep going, um, which is putting me at a disadvantage. Um, the leading cause of child mortality is malnutrition, and one third of all deaths of children um, are under the age of five, are from hunger. And like Becca said, it is about power, um, inequalities to access, and that's access to education, so illiteracy, poverty, war the inabilities um, of families to grow or buy food. So it's just kind of a spiral effect. If you don't have the education, then you're illiterate, and it's just, all right. But I think it starts at hunger because, I don't know if ever, you guys have ever seen the um, documentary Place at the Table, but I think it really outlines hunger well. It has a child who is very hungry, so she can't pay attention in school, and that affects her education, which will affect her down the line. So it is a spiraling effect of um, many inequalities. Oh, so, we don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. so this is um, just statistics in Philadelphia. I read an article last week. Um, Philly, in this 10 cities where an appalling amount of Americans don't have enough food, Philadelphia was ranked um, number eight. And among the homeless, 49% of the requests for shelters in Philly are going unmet. So every night, 49% of the people who are asking for a shelter aren't getting a place to stay in one. Um, and 20% of the people who are asking for food assistance aren't getting the food assistance. Um, and 60% or 60% of these people who are asking for this assistance, who are asking for these shelters, are employed. A lot of, there's a huge stigma that those who are hungry are lazy, they don't get jobs, um, and they're just kind of sitting at home, or not even home, they're homeless. But um, they really are the working poor in America. Um, they're just not getting enough to sustain their family. Something has to sacrifice. If they want to send their children to school, food might have to sacrifice. So it is a different way to look at it. Um, and then it, this was interesting. Phil Abundance um, said that anti-hunger efforts are becoming more and more difficult each year because of Congress votes to decrease food stamp benefits. Um, there was a recent cut in food stamp benefits this past year. Um, 
Just to go over briefly, because SNAP is a really complex thing, but it's the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program in Philadelphia. It's also known as food stamps. Um, more than 460,000 Philadelphians receive SNAP, but 150,000 who are eligible don't receive it. And even more of those 150,000 who are eligible, people are on the brink, like they're like $1,000 off of receiving SNAP, so they can't receive it. So there are even more people who should be getting this supplemental assistance program who aren't. Um, and these are just some numbers. So if you're fat, if you have one, per if you're just a single person and you get SNAP, you get $194 um, a month. But looking at a family of 10, they would get four, uh, only $1,461 a month for food. Um, and then just to throw it out there, if you're an individual, you're considered living in the poverty, living in poverty if you make a thousand dollars, around a thousand, I don't know, these statistics are in my head, so they're not too accurate, but I know it's around a thousand. A family of four, it's around 20,000, so that just gives you a perspective of living in poverty. Um, so Face to Face is one of the sites that we go to. Um, it's two miles from LaSalle, so it goes from like here, and then there's like 150 people every day that go there well mondays and fridays we go but i think they're open monday t sunday monday tuesday friday saturday yes yeah um so 75 to 150 people are fed there like 12 to 2 every day um and at this soup kitchen it's like <coughs> interacting the whole time so it's not just like giving them a meal and, and not conversing so that makes it more dignified um, so they're really trying to like change that at every soup kitchen that we're going to. So we do the video. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sunday Breakfast Rescue Mission is really different from Face to Face because um, it's in the city. It's all men. Um, so they feed 200 to 300 men, and um, it's just like a conveyor belt. Like you just give the meal to them, and then they go. Like they don't talk to anyone. Like. I would personally feel awful, like, yeah, you get a meal, but, like, I just think with the volunteers, like, here we are, like, behind a thing, and we feel very superior, like, here's a meal, like, I just, I don't like the interaction. St. Francis Inn, we go here on Thursday nights, um, it's in Kensington, it's actually the first soup kitchen in Philadelphia to, um, start this kind of, like, dining room style soup kitchen. So usually, like Becca was describing um, at Sunday breakfast, it would be kind of like a cafeteria line and like just line up and get your food. St. Francis Inn was the first one to say, you know, why don't we have tables and why don't they sit down with their families? And it is kind of cool, there's a line at the door um, and if a cup, like a family of four wants to sit together, they wait for a table of four to open up. Like you don't want to separate um, a family to have dinner. They shouldn't sit separately just because they can't have dinner that night all together at their home. Um, and 200 to 300 people come through St. Francis' doors on a Thursday night and um, we take four to six people and I said we go almost once a week. St. Francis is really um, a popular one because it is kind of like historically known for its style. So a lot of people from out of state also, um, if they're doing like any sort of like immersion or mission or service trip, they make a stop here. So some nights we are working with people um, from different areas, which is unique. 